Hello everyone, this is Steven Simonis, your market associate here at FXDD, coming to you from our headquarters in Seven World Trade Center. As always, allow me to remind you that foreign exchange trading does involve a high level of risk, so please stay tuned to the end of the video to read our disclaimer. Now today I'm coming to you to answer a question submitted to us from Tyrone on the Ask FXDD portion of our website. Tyrone wanted to know how to use the alert system on the MT4 platform. So what I'm going to aim to do is to show you how to set up the alerts and to define a couple of key terms along the way. Now I have the platform up in front of me, so let's zoom in and take a closer look. Creating an alert sound is a relatively simple procedure. Locate the alerts tab on the bottom of the platform in the terminal window and left click it once. You can then right click anywhere inside the window and click create to begin setting up the alert. In the subsequent window, you will notice that several action types are available. For now, you can leave it on sound. The next step would be to choose the sound you want to have played when your specific conditions are met. You could choose some default MT4 sounds from the drop down menu or if you wish to have a unique audio file on your PC that you wish to have played, you can click the ellipses button next to the drop down menu to find that file. You can play the sound by clicking the test button. Once you have chosen your sound, you are ready to create your alert conditions. The symbol will be the currency pair that will form the basis for your alert. The condition is the specific action you want to trigger the alert. You can choose to sound the alert when the bid or the ask prices rise or fall to a certain level or when the empty 4 o'clock strikes a certain time. You can then input the specific price or time in the value column. Timeout represents the amount of time that will lapse between sounds, provided that the condition is still met at that time. And maximum iteration is the total amount of times that the alert will sound before ceasing altogether. Once all the fields have been completed, you can click the OK button to create the alert. Creating an email alert is a bit more of an involved process. To get started, you can click Tools, Options, and then Email. Please be sure to click the box next to Enable. It is important to note that before inputting anything into these fields, you will need to sign up for webmail through your Internet Service Provider, or ISP. Once you have done this, your ISP should provide you with important information. The SMTP server will be the server address for your ISP's mail server. The SMTP login will be your full webmail address. The SMTP password will be the password to the webmail. For the from column, you can enter the name or email address that you want to appear as the sender of the email. For the to column, you can enter the name and or email of the recipient of the email. If you wish to have text messages sent to your phone instead, you need to contact your wireless carrier and inquire about how to create email alerts as text messages on your phone. They will likely provide you with an address which you can input into the To column. Once all these fields have been completed, you can return to the Alert Editor window from before, choose Email, and enter the parameters for your alert, as previously illustrated. You can click the Test button to make sure that the email will be sent. Click OK to finalize the process. Now, I'd like to thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any other questions or any questions of your own, feel free to email us at salesteam at fxcd.com. Thanks and have a great day.